I'm Christina from Broken Dreams and welcome to a new video. So uh, you may be wondering what I'm doing here, but like it's been three months since I gave birth and I just wanted to feel a bit normal again. I'm not shying away from being gray and from being tired because motherhood, you know, but I uh, just wanted to kind of do something I usually did in my life before the baby came so here we are with my April to July wrap-up I did actually manage to read a couple of books during uh, that time uh, because the baby basically slept for like most of the day for the entirety of the first month uh, because she was like uh, dealing with jaundice and everything which is fine now and er uh, so everything's good but I just wanted to pop in and say hi this is not gonna be a regular thing probably but just like for the time being uh, I had the urge to make a video so here I am so let's just start first off I have uh, The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary so uh, I read something by Beth O'Leary um, I can't remember it's about the apartment thing but I absolutely loved it so I decided to give another uh, to give it another try and this is a story about Dylan and Addie. So uh, they uh, meet meet up uh, uh, when they're going to their friend Cherry's wedding and they have to kind of share uh, uh, a car because one of their cars breaks down. But the thing is, they were previously involved and in love and were planning stuff and that didn't go as planned and they broke up. And this is like about two years later and through their road trip with... Uh, Eddie's sister and uh, Dylan's best friend and a straggler who is not dealt with that well in the end so like that was a bit of a thing but whatever <laughs> anyways uh, Dylan and Eddie kind of go through you know the stuff that happened uh, in their relationship and try to find some common ground I guess and I really like this uh, this was basically a story about the fact that life is messy, nothing is ever perfect, you have to deal with your uh, family's expectations and disappointment and uh, there was also a part about an untreated mental illness and it was just, it was very real, it felt very real, like the problem, it wasn't glorified or like perfect, it just felt like they were real people and I absolutely loved that and like the overall kind of message was you have to be okay with yourself uh, to actually be with somebody else because like in the end it turns out that like the timing wasn't really right for them at the time they met so yeah I thought it was really good oh oh one thing uh, you follow two timelines so you follow the timeline when they're on the road trip and you follow the timeline when they actually met and their relationship there and I really liked it and I'm definitely going to be reading a bit more of uh, Beth O'Leary in my future then we have a dead gin in Cairo with by P. J. Clark, which is the first uh, kind of novella in the Dead Gene Universe series and I absolutely loved it. We follow uh, an investigator uh, called Fatima in uh, the 1900s in uh, Cairo and uh, she uh, is investigating a suicide that kind of turns out to be something more than uh, meets the eye and that's all I can say because it's like a really short story um, and uh, there are a couple of more short stories uh, in the series however I just jumped forward to the actual novel later on which is a master of gin and I read it and uh, I must say I like the short story better than the novel itself it felt like a lot of uh, there was a lot of uh, lore and a lot of um, exposition and just a lot of explaining rather than any actions. Uh, there was a lot of descriptions of different uh, kind of outfits and parts of town uh, and the whole lore thing. Although I appreciate that it was there, uh, it wasn't really explained, but just kind of you were forced into like that uh, lore. And thank God I read uh, the da uh, Daivabad trilogy, so I kind of knew the different kinds of jinns that were introduced here because they really weren't explained that much. Although there was a lot of lore going on, like the important bits weren't as explained as I would have liked had I not read something about jinns before and didn't know what types they there were. 
so yeah but uh, the last part was really interesting and basically what happens is there's like a murder of a secret society like like the, all of the members and the murders are really weird and it's obvious that a supernatural force uh, murdered them and Fatima is called uh, there to kind of investigate because she is in the ministry for the supernatural entities and she kind of has to uh, investigate she has the help of her girl girlfriend city and like there's like a police guy that also kind of comes into play at some point and like it was overall interesting but just like just there was something bit missing for me there but overall i thought it was fine continuing into the 1900s i read the house of shattered wings by aliad de Bodad, which is the first book in the dominion of the fallen uh series so this is basically the story of four fallen angels who uh form this kind of great houses in paris so this is set in Paris after the Great Magician's War and everything is in disarray, Paris is shattered completely, it's in ruins and uh, we are following the House of Silver Spires whose uh, founder Morningstar uh, kind of disappeared years ago and we're following its current uh, leader Celine. Uh, and uh, two other characters, like the point of view of two other characters. One is a Vietnamese something, I can say because you learn in the book uh, that uh, what uh, Philip is. Uh, but it was really interesting because he's not a regular human, that's all I'm gonna say. And then we follow the point of view of an alchemist called Madeline, and uh, she is basically hooked on drugs. Uh, that uh, are kind of taken from angel uh, angel uh, dust, like from the bones, and uh, yeah, uh, I found this to be really interesting. Uh, the whole uh, kind of world building world building is very intricate. Uh, you you like understand everything. There's literally just enough information to get you through the book itself, but you see that the world is much more expansive expensive bigger <laughs> and um i'm actually really looking forward to at least trying the second book so i can see what will happen uh there uh like next so yeah i uh i absolutely uh love this one uh then i read stars above by marissa meyer which is the 4.5 uh, book in the uh, Lunar Chronicles. So this is a collection of nine short stories where we kind of get to uh, see the background stories and snippets of life from, you know, our loving characters from the main books. Uh, so we kind of find out how Cinder got to New Beijing. We find out how Wolf became, you know, like the killer. Uh, we find out uh, how Chris ended up in the satellite. And it was really just uh, kind of very nostalgic i love the series in general so this was just like i just the moment i started reading i just remembered all of them and it was really just such a nice time and i i absolutely loved it then i read and finished finally uh the um, sebastian de castell's uh, great coat series and i read tyrant strong which is the fourth book in the series and the final one and i'm gonna, not gonna tell you much what happens or if anything is the fourth book so we follow the uh, falcio uh, cast and presti who are kind of the let's say the musketeers of the of the world and uh, we follow just what they do through four books and this is kind of the conclusion to their story uh i know i felt like we were back to square one with this one because i barely made it through the beginning i really struggled uh but in the end there were a couple of scenes where i was just sobbing it was just you i mean i guess I would give the entire series like a, a 3, maybe 3.5, but you get so attached to the characters by the end that you cannot, like, I couldn't, I just had to cry because there was like so, a couple of really heartfelt moments. So yeah, we're gonna try to do a, a final review of that since we did the first three books. So I'm hoping Maya and, Maya and I can find some time to kind of meet and do the review and finish that. 
Then I read The Survival of Molly Salgorn, which is the second book uh, in the Molly Salgorn trilogy by Tad Thompson. And I actually really, really liked it. I know that, uh, that a lot of people didn't like it because it's very different from the first book, uh, where it's uh, actually quite a lot of action. We follow Molly uh, as we and discover that uh, the moment she bleeds, her blood turns into new Molly's and she, uh, how she is... Uh, taught by her family uh, to kind of kill the Mollies, and here we get to see the consequences of the first book, and it's more, um, uh, I don't know, it feels more um, introverted, and uh, a different, there that like there's a different setting, um, and everything, but I just know, I don't know, I just like being uh, in Molly's head, and just seeing what the world has to ring and i'm actually really looking forward to the third book so yeah i unlike many people i really really like this one then i read gender queer a memoir by maya kobabe who is non-binary and asexual uh so this is an autobiographical uh comic and it was really interesting um i found it as a person who still uh, is trying to understand what, uh, how, how non-binary people and asexual people feel, what it means to be heard by um, the pronouns other people use, and just generally this world because it's something new for me. Uh, I I don't know. Uh, like I, none of my friends. Uh, uh, are in that group so I don't have a personal experience so I really appreciated how uh, how good the whole journey was presented through the comic I feel like I learned a lot by reading this comic as somebody who you know doesn't really understand a lot of stuff uh, and just uh, the way that the author felt uh, was just really like well like it translated well to me to understand uh, why it's such a struggle you know to uh, to accept the pronouns that are forced upon you and just generally there's a lot of talk about gender identity self-love hate uh, worry about what other people are going to say and think and it's just a really beautiful exploration of all of that uh However, the one thing I'm going to say, it ended so abruptly. I finished it and I was like, is this, it? is this it? Am I missing a part of the comic? So that was like the only thing I could say bad about it because it just, I felt like it needed a better conclusion, like for something that felt like a conclusion because it just stopped at one point. So I'm not sure what happened there, but yeah, I really, really like that one. Then I read Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which is the first book in the Hogwarts Library series by J.K. Rowling. And, uh, well, it is what it is. It's a fantastic, it's a, basically like um, an encyclopedia of fantastic beasts. And it was fine, you know, you get to learn about how they look like, you know, how they mate, how, where they live, like their characteristics. The one thing I'll say is I was expecting pictures of the beasts. They were still some pictures but for most of them they worked and I was really missing something missing that because I'm not really like a visual person I I have a problem visualizing stuff that's like probably why I don't like a lot of uh, like world building like you know exposition and stuff like that because I just can't imagine it just say you know lamp and that's it uh, <laughs> and I'll imagine something but like I don't know, I just find it very difficult to, like, kind of visualize what's written on the paper in my head. Uh, so I, uh, I would have liked to have, like, pictures of all the animals, because some of them uh, sounded really, really interesting. So, yeah. Then I read uh, The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides uh, in translation, and uh, it was translated by Anna Knezhevich. Uh, so this is the story of psychiatrist Theo Faber, Faber? Faber Tio, who kind of uh, literally gets a job in a hospital to uh, take care of a patient there uh, called Alicia, 
who murdered her husband and has remained silent since and nobody can make her talk and he is kind of hoping that he, through his you know sessions he is gonna make her talk and make her better uh, and uh, at the same time we're um, following uh, him having problems with uh, his marriage and his personal life and I felt it was more the story about him than the patient than Alicia uh, although we do follow uh, her um, experts from uh, her diary and um, I don't know it felt the story felt okay the twist I didn't see coming although it was so there it was so obvious when it happened I was like oh my god that makes so much sense like why didn't I think of that um, but overall it was okay I think I would try another book by this author just to see uh, if I like it, maybe it was the translation or something, I don't know. It just felt okay, but nothing special. Yeah. And finally, the last book I'm going to talk about is Hook, Line and Sinker by Tessa Bela, which is the second book in the uh, Bellinger sister. Uh, I think it will be a duology since there's only two of them, I guess. So in this story, we follow Hannah and Fox's relationship as it develops from the first book. Uh, so, uh, basically, a lot of people say this is a friends to lovers romance. I think it's just two people who immediately like each other but have trouble admitting their feelings because Hannah has been in this long standing, has this long standing crush with a director, and Fox has this long standing image of being just, you know, uh, the gigolo and not a person for a serious relationship so both of the uh, both of them are kind of in the book dealing with their insecurities uh, Hannah of being like not the leading lady always having the supporting role and never fighting for herself um, and that is kind of uh, shown through uh, her work where she really wants to work with music but she never has the courage to actually ask to work on music uh, and she just keeps being the assistant to this director that she has a crush on and then we follow Fox who has been given like this kind of uh, title of man whore since he was like 15 years old and you're never gonna be like your uh, you're gonna be like your dad and stuff like that uh, so he's dealing with that I really like the romance. I really like. I really like when it's slow burning, when there's text involved, like uh, epistolary stuff. I really kind of does it for me, I guess. Uh, and I loved uh, like the way they kind of came to terms with their feelings and finally accepted. Yes, we like each other. We want to be with each other. However, I just always forget that I hate Tessa Bailey's smut. I just don't vibe with it at all i literally i just skip the parts where there's actual smut because i just that's just not my kind of smut i guess it, it would be really good for someone that likes it but i just don't but like the entire the rest of the book is perfect for me and then like this tiny part is just isn't so yeah unfortunately that that's that's um that's sad, I guess, because there are other Tessa Bailey books that I'd like to read, but I just, I'm not sure if I want to uh, kind of uh, make myself go through this month. <laughs> oh my god, that's so bad. Anyways, okay, I've talked enough. And those are the, I think, nine books that I read throughout this period of three months. I think that's really good. I am in the middle of a million other books. Uh, just, uh, you know, trying to chop a couple of pages at a time. Uh, and yeah, that's it for me. Please uh, kind of keep watching Maya. I think she's doing a brilliant job. She is taking a break right now. And I'm really pleased for her. She really uh, should, you know, like she, uh, she, she has been reading a lot this year. And uh, just thank you for supporting our channel. And I hope we you know, get back to normalcy soon, but for now, this is, uh, this is how it's gonna be, I will pop up maybe sometime uh, again, but for now, I hope you're, and Snoopy is here also, this wouldn't be a video without Snoopy, 
<laughs> so uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, there are important links uh, in the description down below. Um, and I guess I'll see you in another video. Bye!